The next part of your homework asked you to draw a liver and to consider the different processes that happen in the liver um, as far as carbohydrate metabolism, protein metabolism, and lipid metabolism. So um, please see here that we'll start with carbohydrates. Okay, so in your bloodstream, you need to keep a steady amount of glucose. And the liver has the enormous responsibility of making sure your blood glucose is not too high or too low. And it takes direction from hormones like insulin and cortisol, amongst others, in order to make your blood sugar go up or down. If it is told that you have too much blood sugar, then it will bring in more glucose and it will store it in a process called glycogenesis as glycogen. Conversely, if your blood sugar is too low, then glycogenolysis will break down the glycogen and free up individual glucose molecules to go into the bloodstream and replenish the supply. If you eat fructose, fructose does not stay in your bloodstream, it goes straight from the intestine into uh, the liver. And then this fructose has to be either um, used by your mitochondrion to make ATP, or it will be stored as triglycerides. So um, triglycerides can be made in the liver when um, excess carbohydrate is taken in, especially fructose. And this is implicated in the development of fatty liver disease. So um, another process is that when um, glucose uh, needs to go up in the blood, but let's say the glycogen stores are not around, then the liver can do a couple of things. One thing that I didn't even write on here is that the liver can actually make glucose in the process of gluconeogenesis. And we haven't talked about that yet, but it would make basically make more glucose molecules. Pretty awesome. But it also can take triglycerides, break them down into ketone bodies, and then those ketone bodies can be used to make ATP. Now, truthfully, I'm showing it going into the mitochondrion in the liver, but really these ketones are so valuable, they would be put into the bloodstream, just like glucose would, to go feed the brain and other organs that are um, needing more energy, because the liver can make ATP from pretty much anything. Okay, so then uh, what about proteins? Well, in the case of proteins, our body really doesn't like to use them to make ATP if it can help it, but it does happen a little bit every day. And also old proteins have to get broken down anyway. And so in order to break down and recycle them, they first get deaminated. So they take the nitrogen off, they take off that amine group and they're left with um, a deaminated amino acid and a waste product called ammonia. So the deaminated amino acid can be used by the body to make ATP from through the mitochondria but the ammonia is a waste product that has to be converted into urea only by the liver as far as I know. And then that urea goes into the bloodstream and it's uh, filtered by your kidney and it ends up in your urine. And that's how urine actually gets the name urea.